1997 250 GP season opened at Televera in Spain. Amongst the autograph hunters, we spoke with Talon Voland. Yeah, I feel really good. You know, pre-season, had some really good races. I've won almost every moto I've raced on the Yamaha, so I feel very confident. And I think for me, you know, changing the team was a new motivation. You know, you get on a new bike, new team, and everything is new to you. And I feel so strong mentally and also physically. I work very hard, so I expect today a very good result. And those early season uh, form was very good, wasn't it? Because Beaucaire and then Mantova, you must like the bike a lot. Uh, we worked a few things out, uh, and uh, we did quite a bit of testing in December, and we got it all working the way I want, and I feel very strong. I think the bike corners really, really well, so I think th that is my biggest uh, asset or advantage compared to last year is my cornering speed. From there, we had the opportunity to talk to the new look, Stefan Everts. Your winter preparation for the new season has been successful? Yeah, so far it's been very good. Uh, I went to Spain end of January, and uh, after that... We got the new bikes and um, everything went perfect, you know, I got no injuries in my practice sessions and uh, I just got a little flu for two weeks, but I think everybody gets sick in the, the beginning of the season, so, uh, so far so good. And a brand new bike, uh, much testing needed to make it competitive? Well, we tested uh, not so much, but we tried some different settings and uh, different engine spec and... Uh, but not really like 14 days non-stop, you know, no. We did like uh, six days, seven days maximum testing. From there we caught up with Suzuki mounted, Johnson sponsored, Monique Bafutz. Did you learn a lot from last season? Yeah, I think so. Uh, I won five uh, Grand Prix in a row and that was uh, quite easy for me, those, uh, winning those Grand Prix. But... Uh, it started in Brazil actually that I was not in shape anymore like I was before and uh, I think uh, my motivation now is uh, to keep uh, all the Grand Prix in the same uh, shape that uh, I was with then, uh, when I was uh, riding those five Grand Prix and winning those five Grand Prix. But uh, you know you, have to, you need a little bit of luck also and uh, I think it's a new season, it's a new motivation for me and I want badly that one, one number one plate, that's for sure. And so does Sebastian Tortelli on the Kawasaki want the number one plate. Let's catch up with him. I think for me it could be a hard year because, you know, I'm just coming back to the 250. And I don't know, I have to learn another thing. And uh, on this time, you know, I don't think so one goal or something like this. Just, just what I wanted to have fun on the bike and we'll see after. That's just really what I come and just for racing, have pleasure. That's it. Now the good rider have to be good on supercross and motocross at the same time and the best place for learning is to unite it. So I was there for winter time for training and it was good. And I think now there are three years I go there and for me it was good learning there and I think I have good progress on supercross because I'm going there too. And so down to the line for the very first race of 1997. The question everybody wants to know, especially the riders, can Tortelli run with the challengers. Can he run with Byra, Befoots, Colin Dugmore, all the old hands, the gate drops, heat number one, they come out of the gate, they'll go scorching up Tortelli, Oxbow, Kawasaki mounted, Tortelli has gone to the front, Befoots has gone to second, Everts is a little way down, so is Talon Voland. This is the opening lap at Talavera in Spain, the 96-125 world champion, the baby of motocross, Sebastian Tortelli, has gone to the front. And now the rest of the pack, I wonder if they're going to see this for the rest of the season. Has he got the ability to carry it through? 90 minutes of racing. He's moved from the 125. He's got all the support of Europe, but he's got some mighty strong challenges behind him. That's Stefan Evans, the reigning 250 world champion. And remember, Stefan never rides over his head. Tortelli may well be setting a pace that's too quick for himself. But Futz is there having a good look. There's Everts. Everts is getting himself caught up there with Voland. Everts and Voland together. Everts really is the robot of motocross. He just slots him in weekend after weekend. He may well be happy to let Tortelli go away, establish his own speed, 
But I'm sure when they get onto the podium and the checkered flags there, Stefan Everts and the big Honda will not be far away. But the little Frenchman, 17 years of age, his first ever 250 GP, and right now his pit board says that he's in front. Imagine the pit board telling you that Everts, Byra, Befoots, Volan are all behind you, and Yves de Maria. That's a lot to accept when you're still at school, 17 years of age. He has the confidence that he is the 125 reigning world champion. The crowd love his style. Very, very aggressive rider. Doesn't get phased out by anybody. But does he have the mental stamina to get through two heats of 45 minutes? So far in this first race, he's not put a foot wrong. That Kawasaki prepared by the Dutchman, Jan de Groot, the man that's done so much for motocross riders over the last 10 years. He did a lot to help Albertain. He really is a very, very clever technical man. And now he's working on the Oxbow Kawasaki and assisting Sebastian Tortelli under the very, very watchful eye. There he is, checkered flag already. The first 250 event of the season. Tortelli has got a win. There's Yandekrud, the man that we spoke about. Befoots goes into second. What more can you say? Already back to the line, heat number two. The trophy's in the motorhome already. Can he do it again? This is what's gonna count. Can he concentrate for 90 minutes? There's a green machine. That hooks into the right-hander. Well, what can you say? So Sebastian Tortelli, he's been up on the podium. He's had a break of an hour and a half. The first trophy is in the cabinet already. A big, big smile from Yonder Kruert, from Oxbow, his sponsors, and of course, from Kawasaki. The first heat went to this youngster, Sebastian Tortelli, a faultless ride. In the second heat, it's exactly the same again. Marnik Befoot's behind him. Talon Volan's in there as well. Then it's Stefan Everts. Well, Stefan Everts must be wondering, can he keep his 250 world crown? He's got a whole year of racing to get through. And all of a sudden, he's got a young Turk that's come up from the 125s. A lot of support from the crowd. And here at Talavera, Tortelli is proving to be just so convincing. Another lap completed. The foots are still charging. Talon Volan, the American rider, with the assistance of his brother Tyson, that's over for the season to help him. He certainly will be a hard charging man, that Talon Volan. But right now, it's the youngster that's got it together. He gets out of shape. Tortelli has thrown it away. We said earlier, can he concentrate for 90 minutes? He went into the shadow of those trees, perhaps. Who will know? There are a lot of long shadows across there now that weren't there a little earlier. You saw the front end just go away. Tortelli has gone back to sixth, seventh, possibly down to eighth position. I don't know. We'll try and pick up on the next lap. Now the difficulty is to get his rhythm composed again. First of all, like a bull terrier, he'll shake himself. He'll get refocused on the race. He'll get back into his race rhythm. He'll still be trying to work out in his head what went wrong. I'm sure the shadows must have caught him out. And there's the man. They call him the king. One of the old faithfuls that has stuck with the CR250 Honda for 1997. Come in for a lot of criticism from the American riders. But Ever says it's good enough for him. And he believes he can win another world championship on that bike. Well, that's saying a lot. But wouldn't it be wonderful if he can pull it off? yet again for the Honda factory. So now Tortelli on the charge, working his way up through the field very, very quickly, already back past Pitbira. You can hear the crowd, he's already back past Everts. Well, he's got no respect for anybody. This really is grown up stuff for the little man. He really is incredible. The crowd love it to pieces. And it's gonna be Voland and Befoot running for the checkered flag. That's the way they finish. Tortelli will have to limp away to ride another day. Let's have a look at the results.
And so to round two at Aguida in Portugal, the action continues. But regrettably, no Sebastian Tortelli. But don't worry about that. There's plenty of other opposition. Marnie Bafutz is there. Voland is there. De Maria is there. Bolly is there. De Witt, Jockey Carlson. Who's going to get the all-important hole shot? Portugal's the place. Jockey Carlson. Oh, somebody's gone down. A pile of riders has gone down. Let's pick up in the front of the pack. Number one, Stefan Everts on the HRC Honda. Well, a pile of riders went down. We might be able to pick up further on in the race exactly who went down in that first corner incident. That will certainly mix up the results. 96 world champion Stefan Everts on the HRC works machine. That's the 250 Honda. He's gone to the front very, very quickly. And that's going to be a hard man to catch when he's in front. He is just so reliable. But Pitbar is doing the charging at the moment. And there's plenty of others there as well. Talon Volan back on the charge as well. But really, this man has picked himself up a very, very nice lead. That's the man from the States, Mr. Brown, from Tennessee. Nice to have the USA riders across in Portugal. They'll be looking to do the whole year. Marni Bafutz, the man that went so well in Spain in heat number one. And, of course, Tortelli and Volan tie on points for the day. Tortelli injured his leg in that accident, and he has gone missing. He's got a cast on that leg at the moment. He says he'll be back fairly soon, but with a man like Everts, you can't afford to miss races. That's the Chesterfield man, and he knows that's the man that he's got to catch on the RWJ Silkeline Honda. Colin Reed's very, very professional. Young rider that he's got there, Yoki Carlson, doing an outstanding job at the moment, and he's leading the Portuguese Grand Prix. Well, that can't be bad for Yoki, for Honda, for RWJ. And that's Stefan Everts, the man that rode for RWJ last year. And he must be wondering. Yoki Carlson won't be wondering. He's got the win. Well done, Yoki Carlson and RWJ. A second goes to Stefan Everts. And a quick wash and a shower to Talon Voland. It's already like summertime here. <laughs> Never mind time for a shower. Let's get back to the heat number two. Who's it going to be? We've got a Honda. It's the 96 world champion, Stefan, Bra uh, Stefan Everts. He's got Mr. Brown, the Tennessee man, behind him. Number 75. He did so well before the GP season started in Bouquet in France. And now we see the popular Mike Brown, the American rider, mixing it with the best in Europe at GP level. And this certainly won't do him any harm at all. There he is, super smooth, Stefan Everts, aboard the HRC Honda, over which there's been so much criticism in the States, but certainly no criticism from Stefan Everts. He says the bike is wonderful. He's up front. He's already seen a couple of checkered flags. The bike impeccably set up. Stefan Everts, the reigning world champion. We spoke with him earlier, and he just said, leave it to me. I'll give Honda another world championship. Well... That's a mighty, mighty big statement. He's got the best of the world hounding and harassing him. 15 races for the year. And at the end of the series, can he be right up there flying the Honda flag yet again? There's many people that say he can. I'm sure his worry is Tortelli, who is missing here today. Look at the smoothness of this rider, Stefan Everts. He just plugs him away weekend after weekend, keeps it all together. And that's how he gets his very, very valuable points. Mike Brown doing an excellent job as well. Be good to watch him for the season. And then Talon Voland, another American rider that's come across for the GP season very, very quick. If we can keep it together, he's been known to get a bit raggedy. But if he can keep it together, Talon Voland could well be there. At the end of the first GP, he was joint leader with Sebastian Tortelli. Now he's got some more work to do again. But right now, these are the two that chased each other around Europe for 96. Stefan Everts and Burfoots. It looks like being a carbon copy all over again. But of course, Everts knows that he's the man that's got the title. Psychologically, he's got a very, very big advantage. He's a very quiet youngster when he's at the track, walks around, has a look at the circuit, gets into a pair of shorts, doesn't necessarily talk with other, all the other riders and the crowds. You see him sitting on a corner very, very quietly and then getting the checkered flag just a few minutes later. In a second place on a very, very gallant ride with an injured wrist, 
Monik Bafuts on the Johnson Suzuki. You have fully recovered from the injury oh, yes. from Spain? Now the injury is almost finished. I make some exam, some echography, and still okay. And the ligament is all right now. Just I have to check again in three weeks, and it will be normally okay. So I have the um, authorization from the doctor to ride today. So it's okay for me, and I don't have pain. So. And so from our Charlie Chaplin lookalike down to the line. The gate is up, Tortelli is back, he's fit. Everts is there as always, alongside him, Mike Brown, the American rider. Mike Brown looks as if he's got a problem. He hasn't come right up to the gate. He's uh, fiddling around with the engine. No, he's got a problem. Mike Brown pulling his bike off the line. He could well have an electrical problem. He's shaking his head, he's not happy about that. Eyes down, look in. The gate will drop. Heat number one in Holland. Away they go, a long, long straight. Sebastian Tortelli, he said so nonchalantly that the doctor has given him authorization and he is quite fine and he's now in front. Well, the doctor must be quite right. He's ahead of De Maria, he's ahead of Evers, he's ahead of Mike Brown, ahead of Talon Volan. The Hooters are already going. Well, what can you say about this youngster? He's busy writing exams. Jan de Groot doing some incredible preparation for this youngster. He's got a wonderful manager that's helping him as well. A man that knows all about motocross himself. And here he is right now, first race back. He had to miss the second GP, but here he is back up front. His injury, we saw him crash in the trees. Uh, he's back today and he's up front. He's got Stefan Everts behind him and he must be very, very happy about that. He needs to pick up some points because already Everts and Volan have been very, very consistent. So Tortelli knows that he's got to get a couple of wins under his belt very quickly. There's Talon Volan, very, very popular American rider, now living in Europe with his brother Tyson. They certainly put in good results every weekend. Another lap completed for Everts. Then behind him is Marnik Bafuts. His wrist appears very, very much better today, but he must certainly still be riding with some pain. The Oxbow Kawasaki, the 96-125 world champion. The speculation over the winter was, could Tortelli move up with the big boys and run with the best in the world? Well, there's your answer. He did it in Spain. He missed out in Portugal, back to Holland, and he's leading the race yet again. He takes the checkered flag. That's in the bank for him. With no further ado, back to the line. Race number two. This is where we said there's a question mark. Can Tortelli concentrate for 90 minutes? Well, we'll soon find out. Frederick Bolle has gone through to the front. That's Tortelli in front of us now. He's a long way back. Oh, Tortelli's in the cheap seats. Tortelli upside down. He's thrown it away. That's the answer to his concentration for the moment. But he's going to come storming back from there. He's going to be as mad as a snake when he gets out of that pickle. So up front, a completely different start. Tortelli's teammate, Frederick Bolly, went through very, very quickly. So did Talon Boland. We'll have a look and see. Befoots was there. Stefan Everts was definitely there. There's Tortelli. He's down in about 20th or 22nd place. That won't please him at all. So up front at the moment, lap number one, Talon Boland is there. Who's up with Talon Boland? Befoots is there. He is definitely there. I think it's perhaps Byra that's there as well. Stefan Everts, Frederick Folly has gone back on Tortelli. Another mistake. Well, what has he done to deserve this? He threw it away in the first corner. He was starting to work his way through the pack fairly quickly. Then he's done it again. Number eight. That's nice to see De Witt moving up as well. Callan Boland's there. De Witt is there. Stefan Everts, he'll just be having a very, very emphatic look as to what is going on. He can see exactly who's ahead of him. No need to panic yet. 
Everts knows that he can bank the points away quietly. Very, very good pit crew. They will tell him exactly what he's got to do and where he's got to be. But there is Stefan Everts now. He has got up onto the tail of De Witt already. He'll have a look. De Witt goes wide. Everts will now go inside. It's all over, I'm sure. Stefan Everts goes inside. But the race win goes to Befoots. A fine ride from him. Followed by bike number three, Talon Voland. So to Italy for round number four. This is where the work really is starting. Tortelli down with his crazy cap on the gate already. So he's on the line. He's got himself a good grid position. He will come up. Everts and Volan on the line already. Eyes down, look in. Away they go. Out of the gate. This is the all-important hole shot. There's Tortelli. Tortelli takes the Yandukura Kawasaki round to the left, around to the right. Catch me if you can. He got out of shape last week in Holland, but he's back again today to try and pick up some valuable points. Everts and Volan starting to dominate. Jockey Carson's had some very, very good rides. Mike Brown has put in some great rides. Callan Volan, of course, still way up on the leaderboard. Marne Befoots, he'll be looking for valuable points. Round number four in Italy, a completely different circuit. Injury, of course, already taking its toll. But Futz has had some injury. Sebastian Tortelli has had some injury. Mike Brown, we saw a plug fail on the line, and that cost him some valuable points as well. That put the Tennessee rider out. But back in Italy, a big, big support for the youngster from France. And then down the hill goes Stefan Evers. He's being chased by Talon Voland. Oh, Talon Voland has thrown it away. Never mind Talon Voland chasing Stefan Everts. He's chasing his bike. That rider will either be concussed or very dazed or very sore. Look at the condition of that Yamaha. Talon Voland, he threw that away big, big time. Well, Sebastian Tortelli, he's still looking fine. Yves de Maria comes into the picture now. A very competent rider is Yves de Maria. When he's on form, there's not too many riders that will catch him. Stefan Everts working away. He's already thrown his goggles away. That's very, very unusual for Stefan Everts. Number seven coming into the frame as well. That's Pitbira on the Honda. But this is the man that there's been so much speculation about. Another victory for Kawasaki and Sebastian Tortelli. And so a quick wash and polish for Frederick Bolle. Look at that magnificent helmet. The best. Nothing but the best. Bernard de Witt down on the line. The all clear has been given. That's the green flag that says everyone's where they should be. The board will be up. The board will turn. The gate will drop. The adrenaline went pulp. Was that Mike Brown that was creeping down the main straight? Well, it was. Mike Brown, the man from Tennessee, he gets to the front. Yves de Maria goes into second. This is an interesting start to the race. Tortelli, has he been farming again? He's back in fifth or sixth spot at the moment. So the Kawasaki further down. Normally that bike comes out the gate very, very quickly. Mike Brown has gone to second. Stefan Everts has gone to third. Frederick Bolli has gone to fourth. Where's his teammate? Well, goggles on arm already. That's not a good sign. Sebastian Tortelli tossing them away. It's really not a good thing. Obviously, he's got some dirt, possibly the dirt inside the goggles, and that starts to jump, in, jump up and down as you're riding, and that's a terrible distraction. Or alternatively, soil gets into your eye, and the goggle is just an aggravation. So he's thrown those away very, very quickly, and very quickly is Yves de Maria. He is now on the best form we've seen so far this year. He has got Tortelli behind him. He's got Frederick Bolli behind him, and more importantly, he's got Stefan Evers behind him. So de Maria on an absolute charge. Well, there we go. Can Tortelli make a move? Yves de Maria is no beginner. You might well catch him, but you've still got to pass him. 
and Tortelli will find that out quite quickly, I'm sure. Yves de Maria, a very, very aggressive and a very, very professional rider. There he goes, closing the gate wherever he can, making that bike as wide as humanly possible. Down the hill he'll go, Tortelli will jump one-on-one -on -one with him. Tortelli quite happy to jump with the best. Now he's moved up, he's got past de Maria, he's up onto the back of Stefan Evert. Look at the youngster. This is the baby from France, pushing the world champion around. On the big Honda, Tortelli goes to the inside. Everts left the door open, it is again. He can't get the power of the big Honda down. The crowd love it. Oxbar Kawasaki goes to the front. The little man of France with a Charlie Chaplin hat. Never mind laughing at his hat and his bicycle. He is the newfound character of motocross. Makes a small mistake there. And Everts says, make many more mistakes like that and I'll have you. You're missing two world champions, in fact. A 125 and a 250 world champion side by side and it's showtime for both of them who's going to get the checkered flag it's got to be Everett surely Everett takes the win Tortelli gets second what a race well Stefan Everett certainly gets the honors well there's the explanation about the goggles a stone has split his nose that's what happened with that and so to the rostrum and the results to pack our bags and head for Brew in France for round five. The first heat and away they come. They, oh, who, Robbie Herring. Robbie Herring, speedway style, throws it down on the line. He must have got caught up with somebody else. Let's have a look back at the front of the race. Well, it's a Kawasaki, Paul Cooper. Paul Cooper, the popular South African on the Carl Presswood machine. The SoCal Kawasaki has gone to the front in incredible style. Paul Cooper has now got Yoki Carlson on the RW sh RWJ machine behind him. Then it's Eastwood, then it's Everts. Well, Paul Cooper's got his work cut out today. Then coming through fast is Frederick Bolly. Behind Frederick Bolly, 24 Sebastian Tortelli. But Yoki Carlson has gone to the front on the RWJ Honda. He's gone past Paul Cooper. Into third goes Stefan Everts. Then it's Mark Eastwood. Then it's Frederick Bolly. Behind Bolle is his teammate, 24, Sebastian Tortelli. So up front, the charge is. Everts has gone to the front. I think Paul Cooper has gone missing. Everts has gone to the front. Jochen Carlson has gone to second. The man they all came to see, Tortelli, has gone to the front. So two RWJ riders from last year, one and two. Everts is going to take the win. Jochen Carlson is going to take second. And Oxbow Kawasaki mounted. Tortelli will take third. Immediately back to the line for round number two, or heat number two, at Brew in France. This is what the crowd have come to see. A Honda gets the whole shot. Who is it going to be? A rider goes down. The same has happened in heat number one. That's Befoots. Mane Befoots has gone down. That won't please him. That's valuable points. The whole shot. Listen to the crowd. Do I have to tell you? 30,000 Frenchmen came to see Tortelli. In the second heat of the day, he's got the whole shot. He's up front, flying the flag and doing a great job. Mark Eastwood has gone to second. Stefan Everts has gone to third. But this is the Parisian crowd that have come to see the flying Sebastian Tortelli at his absolute best. The schoolboy sensation. Yuki Carlson having a very, very good day here at Brew. Listen to the crowd, the, the hooters, the tricklers. He puts the power on. And when you've got a Yandekroot machine, you better believe there's plenty of power. The reigning 250 world champion on the HRC Honda. But he's got the win. Tortelli takes the win in heat number two. That will get the liquor flowing.
And so to the Czech Republic, round six of the 250 GPs in Lockett and a new headgear for Mr. Tortelli. Heat one, away they go. A completely different track to the one that we saw in Brewer a fortnight ago, but exactly the same hole shot that Kawasaki is so quick out of the gate. Look at this youngster. His starts are straight out of the Gary Bailey book of motocross. Incredible starts. Oxbow mounted. Kawasaki, Sebastian Tortelli, number 24, riding out of France. On a good day, he's proving to be unbeatable. He's got a good teammate in Frederick Bolle. Mark Eastwood getting better and better. And as the season progresses, we just watch Eastwood and his starts getting out of the gate better. And I'm sure that man's going to put it all together one day before the season's over and really start banking the points. But it's Sebastian Tiltelli up front, ever starting to move up. Mike Brown is there, Marnie Befoots. But that's the man that they've come to Lockett to catch. We said a very, very different, a dry circuit. Very, very hard service. Marnie Befoots moving up a position. But Mike Brown from Tennessee says, excuse me, American visitors should go through first. Never mind that. Befoots is on his way. He's on a mission. He wants to get up with the race leader, Tortelli, very, very quickly. So many people doubted whether he could transfer from a 1-2-5 and be competitive first time out. Well, the proof of the pudding is that he can do it. The only question mark is his concentration appears to go. And having said that, I think it might just have escaped him again. Tortelli has gone missing. Stefan Everts has gone to the front. Befutz has gone into second. Frederick Bolly is moving up through the pack. That's Stefan Everts. That is the new race leader on the Honda. Marnie Befutz into second place on the Johnson Suzuki. And I'm sure they know that there is a checkered flag just around the corner. That's good enough. Stefan Everts takes the win. Marnie Befutz will take second. And so to the rostrum yet again. So a very relaxed and laid back explanation from Stefan Everts, making it look easy, but back on the line, they've got it all to do again. Who's gonna get out the gate? Where's Mike Brown? He can get the whole shot. No, there it is. Different man all together. Up the hill they go, they sweep round to the left. Well, yes it is, Mike Brown. Well, can you believe this man? He really has been in exceptional form. Sebastian Tortelli, a long way back, 12th, 13th, 14th, maybe. I don't see Frederick Polly. I do see Stefan Everts. They put some water down now to get rid of the dust. You see mud on one corner and dust on the next. You can see the helmet of Stefan Everts, but to his right, now to his left, is Mike Brown, the ever popular Tennessee rider. And the Honda goes to the front. The 96 250 world champion, Stefan Everts. He is just so good when he gets out front. He's not prepared to mix it with anybody. He rides at his pace. He knows from his pits exactly where he is. Marnie Befutz has now got to play catch up, but Stefan Everts has gone away to the front very, very quickly already, and he is now riding in a relaxed position. Frederick Bolli is a long way back, and even further back, Sebastian Tortelli, not like him. That's our Honda man, and what a job of work he does for the Honda factory. There were many doubting Thomases that all said the frame was too stiff, the engine didn't have the horsepower. Well, Everts has proved them wrong. He just picks up results weekend after weekend against the fastest bikes in the world and shows that there's nothing wrong with the new Honda. Somebody's helicopter on standby as Sebastian Tortelli goes charging after the race leader. Stefan Everts has pits. Mr. Super Cool, he's just being told, you're about to pick up another check and another trophy. Just hang it all together. And then the hard charging, Johnson Suzuki mounted, Monty Befoots. He played catch up so much of 1996, and now he's got to do it all over again. Nice to see Pit Byra, a very, very popular rider in the frame. And then Yoki Carlson, the new star. Oh, Frederick Bolle. Quick lie down, quick word with the steering head there. The star of the new RWJ team is uh, Yoki Carlson and certainly putting some very, very good rides together for them. Stefan Everts says thank you very much. That's good enough. 
two hands aloft, back onto the podium, and some more points. Well, Stefan Evans takes the win yet again on the Honda into second spot, a well-earned place for Manu Befutz. And in third spot, is it going to be? Yes, it is. The popular German Pitbeira on the Palmo Honda. And so we cross the pond once more and back to England. Round seven and almost at the halfway mark. Fox Hills is the place. Unbelievable English sunshine. Race number one, 40,000 capacity crowd on an immaculate Fox Hill circuit. And away they go. Who is it going to be? They go streaming away to the right hand and then there's a double just around that corner. There's a big jump ahead of them now. Over they go. Lap, oh, out of shape they go. Tortelli down the mountain. Well, 40,000 people came to see Tortelli and he's upside down underneath his Kawasaki. Up front and leading the race is Pitbira at the moment, being charged down by Stefan Evans. Look at the capacity crowd. The circuit immaculately prepared. Well, they're going to have some work to do. Stefan Everts has gone charging away. Tortelli went down over that big crash. It would appear the two bikes collided in midair. I think Talon Voland was in that crash. A few of them went down. Tortelli has restarted. He's on the charge, but so is Mark Eastwood. Mark Eastwood looking better and better. That's my man for 97. If you can keep it all together, the dust already starting to come through on an English track. Normally you've got welly boots and a big anorak, but today the sun is shining. 40,000 people are here. Mike Church and his team have prepared a magnificent circuit here at Fox Hills, and the riders have risen to the occasion. You can't appreciate just how incredibly steep those hills are, and every time Evans goes up, he takes the same line up and the same line down. His board will be telling him that Tortelli has remounted, and from stone last, Tortelli is up to ninth spot already. He's now set off after Colin Dugmore on the Seerholz machine, but Everts takes the win. The distance was too great for Tortelli. He's going to finish in the top five, I'm sure. Stefan Everts takes the win, but Futs takes second. And so to the second heat of the day. Tortelli must certainly have had a quick lie down and a wash and polish. Now he's got some work to do all over again. Frederick Bolly, sideways style, but Foots goes to the front. He's being charged down by Stefan Evers. Look at the UK crowd. They say that motocross is alive and well and living in England, and so it is. Incredible field here at Fox Hill and a wonderful, wonderful crowd. It really is exceptional motocross today. You can see the helmet of Stefan Evers. He's got that fin on the back. He has gone to the front. Befutz has gone to second. Colin Dugmore's well up there as well. So is Jockey Carlson on the RWJ. Silkeline Honda, that's nice to see. Number three, Voland is back and racing. He had a big pile up in the first heat. We spoke to him at lunchtime. They did collide in midair. Tortelli had nowhere to go, and in an effort to avoid them, he went down the side of the circuit. There's Tortelli now. He's on his own private charge. He finished fourth in the first race from stone last. So that was an incredible recovery. Now in race number two, after a, not a wonderful start out the gate for him, he's had to play catch up again. Stefan Evers takes win number two for the day. Tortelli right the way through the field to second. Number eight and to San Marino. Talon Boland having a look at the circuit. I suggest he gets his bike quite quickly and gets onto the line because the race has commenced. The all important hole shot. There's a Honda. I wonder if it could be Stefan Everts. 
The world champion goes to the front, making it look so easy. We said before, when Everts has a good day, that HRC Hotner just pulls away, and he has gone to the front yet again. He's got the very quick charging Pitbari behind him. He's got Yoki Carlson. Yoki Carlson ahead of Sebastian Tortelli. Look how close these two jump. Tortelli will go to the inside. And Yoki Carlson says, well, I'll just tag on to you and have a look around the Italian countryside. So Sebastian Tortelli on the Kawasaki, prepared by the now famous Yonder Kruert. The six foot six Dutchman that can just do nothing wrong when it comes to preparation. He is charging down Everts, then Yoki Carlson. Wouldn't it be nice to see Yoki Carlson and the RWJ Honda up on the podium? There's my man, Mark Eastwood. I said right at the beginning of the season, if he can just string them together and get out of the gate, he's got the strength. He's only a little guy when you see him sitting in his camper. He looks like a 16-year-old schoolboy racer. But at the end of the race, at 45 minutes, Mark Eastwood gets stronger and stronger. And he really does turn in some amazing races. There is the man that has done all the work. Another wonderful display of riding from the hard-charging Stefan Everts. That's who the crowd have come to see. Can he pull in another world championship for Honda? Well, he's making it look as if it's just so easy. The hand goes up, the second hand goes up. That means he's got the checkered flag. A win for Stefan Everts and a win for Honda at San Marino. Second place man, Oxbow Kawasaki, Sebastian Tortelli. And so to the podium. And straight back for heat number two. They don't give them much time. A quick shower and something to drink. And away they go again, get some fluids back into the body. But Stefan Evans, this is where he is like clockwork. He never seems to get out of shape. He never seems to get rattled. He doesn't seem to get caught up in a race. Tortelli might well charge him down and Tortelli could well pass him. But you will not see Stefan Everts get out of shape or getting rattled or pushing or bumping too much. He just says, I know my pace. I know at the end of the year I can bring a championship to Honda. That's the professionalism that he rides at. Psychologically, he's very, very strong. Tortelli goes past him and Everts knows. <laughs> Hell, I wonder if he knew that Tortelli wasn't going to back off. That's brave stuff. When you've got a youngster on the inside that's hungry for success. But Everts has been there, done that. He's been there many, many times. And he says, let the youngsters go. When they add up the points, you'll see my name in lights. So Tortelli goes away at the moment. Number seven chasing down there, the German Pitvira. And then Joki Carlson coming through as well on the Silkeline Honda. Tortelli will surely take the victory. That's some valuable points, but don't forget, he missed the second race of the year due to an injury, and a well-earned second place goes to Pitbara. So to round number nine, to Kester in Belgium. The 15 second board has turned, the gate has gone down, the sky is black, there's plenty of mud about, and again they go, round number nine, a completely different circuit, thick grass, retains a lot of the water. If they get a downpour, this could be a chaotic day for racing, but right now the rain is just staying away. Well, up front and running, De Witt's in a nice position. He's going to do battle with Tortelli. The youngster is there again. The crowds have come out at every GP. Tortelli has gone down. Sebastian Tortelli, we've seen this before. A split second of mistiming is into the hay bales and down he goes. So the race leader, number seven, he's on a high from two weeks ago. Pitbira has gone to the front. Frederic Bolle is coming through as well. That's his teammate on the second of the Kawasaki's. So Frederick Bolle moving up a wonderfully prepared circuit. 
than the man that is the king in Belgium, Stefan Everts. This is who they've really come to see. Weekend after weekend, he gives them what they want. The two hands in the air. Stefan Everts wins again. Race number two. And the rain is ever closer. Who is it going to be this time? Tortelli's in there. But Stefan Everts is through. That's a very, very quick left-hander and a very tight corner. Stefan Everts goes to the front in front of his home crowd. That will certainly put him on a high. Tortelli's up there with him as well. So maybe the second race is going to be a whole lot closer. But Pitt Byra, the German, has got it very much together as well. So Tortelli now chasing away after Pitt Byra. And the rain is coming down. He said earlier, this could become a quagmire. Umbrellas have come from nowhere. Look at the rain coming down by the bucket load. Well, can Everts ride in the rain? I think Everts can ride in anything. That's why he's the multiple 250 world champion. Everts takes another win. So we travel yet again, a slightly bigger suitcase needed, and off to round 10 and Brazil. A smiling Stefan Everts signs autographs and gets down to the line. Look at the crowd in that grandstand. They come off the line in a hurry. Sebastian Tortelli, Talon Boland, oh, oh, all fall down. All fall down on the foot. Look at this mishmash. Do I see a number one plate in there? Mm. Now he's got some work to do. I think we saw Stefan Everts in there. We saw Marnie Befoot. No, we didn't. It must have been someone else. So, Stefan Everts has gone to the front. Jockey Carlson is coming through. There's my man, Mark Eastwood. Well done for avoiding that crash. Yves de Maria. Number three, Talon Voland is up there. That's the popular American. He had a big injury. We saw his crash earlier on. That was a big throwaway, and that cost him a couple of points. And then, of course, at Fox Hills, he crashed. Yet again, nothing to do with him. And we see the new livery there of the Johnson Suzuki's now flying the Winfield flag. Same company, different brand, and nice to see Winfield into motocross. Well done. And another rider goes down. Who is it this time? Well, we'll pick up on the race number. He's going to have to get his butt moving pretty quickly. In Brazil, wonderful track preparation. Motocross very, very popular. And unusual to see grandstands built at motocross. Normally they just dig in around the circuit and they stand on the huge mountainside. But here they've got wonderful grandstands at the top. And there goes Sebastian Tortelli, the young Frenchman. We keep saying he's 17. I'm sure by this time of the year he has already had another birthday. 18-year-old Sebastian Tortelli. Still at school and writing exams though. And a lot of work to do in chasing the world champion Stefan Everts. He certainly has done an excellent job of work for Kawasaki, himself and Frederick Bolly, with the immense help of Jan de Groot in Holland. There he sets off after Talon Volen now, and Volen will be giving pit signals. In fact, he'll know very quickly. Manu Befoots now, he knows that he's got work to do. You can see from the top of the circuit, right down to the bottom and he knows there's a lot of people ahead of him here we saw a wonderful picture of the hard charging talent volan and he'll know that tortelli's coming but a very relaxed man up front stefan everts he's in front in second spot is talent volan on the chest of your yamaha and then third position tortelli on the oxbow kawasaki well He's going to get onto the back of Talon Volan very, very quickly. Very, very interesting circuit. A lot of man-made jumps as opposed to the natural, more natural circuits of Europe. And certainly those that can jump well. And you often get particular riders that really can jump incredibly well. And they seem to flow better with the circuit rather than working at the jumps. But they still have to catch that man. 
Stefan Everts. Well, if anybody can, then Tortelli could do it, but I don't think there's enough race time. Yves de Maria on the right-hand side of the circuit there. Up and over he goes. Frederick Bolli being chased down by a flying Joachim Carlson. And then Yves de Maria. Well, still working away at it is De Witt. Watch for the two hands. It's not far away. The crowd know it. Stefan Everts will know it very, very soon as well. He knows there's a checkered flag up there. Down the hill they go. And Tortelli just goes motoring past him. Tortelli has gone to the front in the dying moments. And this is where Everts is so clever. He doesn't get rattled. He says, it's all yours. Tortelli takes the win. Everts goes to second. Talon Volan goes to third. And so to heat two in Brazil. Looks like the 18th fairway at St. Andrews with that grandstand. Kawasaki in the front. Looked to me like Frederick Bolle got the whole shot. I'm sure Frederick Bolle. Oh, and another pile up on the first corner yet again. They'll play pickup sticks. Pit Byra is there. Stefan Everts is there. Mike Brown is there. Why is Frederick Bolle so far back when he got the whole shot? De Witt is there as well. Where is the Tortelli man? The man with the Charlie Chaplin hat. He's the fashion man from Oxbow. And believe me, Oxbow know all about fashion. They've been a sensation in Europe this year at every top exhibition. You just see the Oxbow stand and some wonderful stuff. And they are the sponsors of Sebastian Tortelli, the motocross sensation for 1997. Mike Brown from Tennessee. On a good day, he's just so incredibly fast, but he just can't string them all together. Look at Tortelli. The grandstand up on their feet. Tortelli on the inside. He will want to go past Mike Brown very, very quickly. Look at the way he just sets them up. Whichever way the rider in front goes, Tortelli goes the other way, and he comes through so quickly. And even better when it comes to back mark as he gets past him very, very quickly. He needs to keep Everts right in front of him. He can't hang around and get mixed up with Mike Brown. Got to get on the gas very, very quickly. He's still got a pass, but Byron, look at that. Over the three. Good night and goodbye, Sebastian. The concentration just says it's not good enough. He went for the triple, which nobody else was doing. Everybody was going two in and one out. Tortelli said... This is like Paris Bercy. Let's just do the triple. I love it. And when he looked again, he saw sky and then the earth, and it was all over for him. So he's got to come from behind. Meanwhile, Pit Byra is on a charge. We've seen Pit Byra on the rostrum a couple of times, and he really is a very, very popular rider indeed. Now it's the chance of Manik Befoot on the new Winfield Suzuki, flying those new colors. Marnie Befoot's a rider that certainly gives his sponsors plenty of exposure, as does the hard-charging Yves de Maria on bike number four. So Tortelli back again, the blue flag waving. Somebody wants to come past. This Tortelli is incredible. Crashes his brains out and just comes straight back again at 100 miles an hour. And those are the men that he wants to get up and race. He's just got no respect. Pitfire and De Maria and Befoots, he wants to get up with them. He says, hey, don't leave without me. I want to get up there as well. And he'll be charging through so quickly. He went down very, very hard, actually. He always seems to have a straw bale wherever he is involved. But I'm sure Evers has done enough. Puts the wheel in the air. The hand comes up. Stefan Evers has done enough. Yeah, it's been a really good GP. Uh, fought, unfortunately, in the first moto, I had some problems with the front wheel. I thought I was broken, but, you know, you cannot get, get everything, but uh, a, se a second and a first is really good. I'm an overall victor. I take the overall, so that's, for me, the most important thing. And uh, I'm really, really happy, you know, my points lead is now even bigger. And uh, I just hope I can do a few more.
and so to round 11 in the rain and so to Venezuela. Well, Monique Bafuts is ready, the new Winfield Suzuki looking very, very good and some last minute work on Mr. Tortelli's machine. And so to the line, and this is a critical part of the season. We're down to Venezuela, round 11, it's do or die. Stefan Everts has got to come through and start putting it away finally. Well, look at the mud. Tortelli in practice had a look. It's a critical weekend for him. Who's it going to be? First heat of the day. Away they go. There's a huge amount of water on the circuit. But straight to the front is Pitbaira on the Palmo Honda. Well, he's obviously quite happy in the mud. But he's got, he's got the man right there. There's Stefan Everts, Talon Voland. They go from muddy sections and they get into a few dry pieces. But overall, the track has got a lot of water lying on it and they've got some work to do. Manu Bafuts, enough for him. And so to the podium of Heat 1. Everts is there, Tortelli into second. Back to the line immediately. More rain, more mud. Heat number two. We said earlier, a critical race. A pile of riders has gone down again. Stefan Everts caught up in that. That won't make him happy. He just twists the front end to get that facing the right way. That gives Tortelli the opportunity to go to the front. Start picking up some points. Pitbaira hooked onto him. Frederick Bolly is there as well. De Maria. Oh, Tortelli has gone down. Big time. The little man is not happy about that. He fell very, very hard. Went onto his back. Not a very, very comfortable accident at all for him. And that could be critical for the rest of the year for this man. Only four races remain. Well, Pitbaira has done it this time. An excellent ride for him. Stefan Everts is still in the points. Tortelli is out of the points. And Everts must know he's done enough. Round 12 and so to Indonesia and out the gate they come again a completely different circuit very very long straight some go wide some go tight but it's the all-important hole shot Mike Brown certainly didn't get it I think Pitbaira has got the hole shot well Palmo Honda go to the front the way I saw it we'll have a look at the way they go down the back it's certainly a Honda that went into the corner first the riding style of Pitbara. Mark Eastwood is there as well. This is good to see. Behind Mark Eastwood is Talon Voland. He's back on the gas. Stefan Everts, what are you doing right back there? So, Pitbara with a great, great start. Let's have a look and see. Yes, it is. Number seven has gone to the front. He came out of the gate very, very quickly. He's got Talon Voland almost alongside him on the outside and then he'll go to the inside so Byra and Violin go charging away now we've got an interesting situation bike number four that'll get you guessing because of Tortelli's injury he has given his bike to Demoria who will ride for Kawasaki in 98 and that is Demoria in third spot in Indonesia look at the racer we've got on our hands Volan is caught up in the race of a lifetime with the Chesterfield Yamaha Pit Byra is all over the back of him on the Palmo Honda. And Demaria, the man that we said earlier, when he has a good one, he is so good. Demaria has gone to second on Tortelli's Yandekrut prepared machine. So first time out on the Kawasaki. Demaria must think all his birthdays have come at once. He is now charging after the race leader and looking mighty fine, I might say. Pit Byra on, and there's Mark Eastwood. He's telling his guys in the pits, everything's well under control. Mark Eastwood, we said right at the beginning of this, if he can just get a few things right. Well, number 10 hasn't got things right. That's Tractor with a problem. Mark Eastwood looking better and better. Talon Volan now charging away. There is Stefan Everts. He knows that the World Championship by this stage is well and truly under control. 
He's now got to start calculating. He doesn't need race wins. He's just got to slot them in. He cannot afford an injury. And as long as he almost keeps circulating, he's going to be the new world champion. So right now it's Voland with a new green Demoria mounted Kawasaki behind him. And he must wonder what he's done to deserve this. Demoria, Demoria goes a little bit wide. Voland will come back. Talon Voland, the man that started the season so well with Tortelli and then crashed in the third race and went down very, very hard. Now, the bike of Tortelli, ridden by De Maria, has gone to the front. This must gladden the heart of Kawasaki, who have signed De Maria. And first time out, a race win. Nothing wrong with that. Yves De Maria, what a popular win. Second heat, can he do it again? Can he do it again? I see a Suzuki. It must surely be Befoots. Well, let's have a look when we can get a clear sight of them coming up towards us. Yoki Carlson in a good position. We still can't see who got the whole shot. We'll have a look now as they turn and run towards us. It must surely be Talon Voland. Well, we don't know. It's the riding style and the riding colors of Talon Voland with the Chesterfield Yamaha, I'm sure. I think it's number four. I think Yves de Maria has gone back to second again. Look at this. And then behind them is Pitbaira. Well, de Maria, what a high he is on. He's got the nod from Kawasaki to come into the team for next year. He's flying the flag today for his injured teammate, Tortelli, who got hurt in Venezuela, injuring his spine. He took a very, very bad fall on his uh, damage of vertebrae and his bike has gone across to De Maria for today in Indonesia, and what a job of work he's doing. Stefan Everts having a look at all this and just trying to work out what is going on. So that's his teammate from last year. Of course, Everts and Yoki Carlson both rode for RWJ Silkeli and Honda last year. Yoki Carlson moved up and took the team leader spot this year, and Stefan Everts sponsored under his own umbrella at the beginning of this year and then he's had some additional sponsors come in and a very very professional outfit he's had all year long but look at de maria he really is a very very stylish rider talon volan cannot shake him off and that yamaha of volans is unbelievably quick we've heard some horsepower claims from all over europe and really what that pushes out at the back wheel is what the 500s were pushing out five and six years ago so all of a sudden, De Maria, he's got a new lease on life. He knows that he's got a wonderful contract for next year. And why not bank a few points and get everybody at Kawasaki? And all the spectators here in Indonesia are rooting for De Maria. De Maria, the Frenchman, versus Talon Volan, the popular American. This Kawasaki is too quick. And he just says, give me a Yandekruid prepared machine. He's got the Oxbow shirt as well. He's got the whole set from Tortelli, everything except the Charlie Chaplin hat and the bicycle. And De Maria's have it. What a way to start your new career. Two out of two for De Maria. Round 13 in Poland, you'll see some glum faces. The reason is that they have asked for the track to be changed and it was not accepted. That is the result. There has been a major accident during practice. As a result, we are told that Joki Carlson has gone down and the riders just explaining why the track should have been changed as they had requested. Maybe this is now the last heat before you are a world champion? Yeah, maybe if I don't do enough or uh, or I don't get out of top eight, then uh, I will be uh, the champion in the next moto. And a very distinguished career so far. This will make four world championships. <clears throat> this more or less important, or it's difficult to tell at this moment how important this championship is for you? Well, it's very important because I think 
I proved uh, that I've been really strong the whole season, and you know that that's what I really wanted to do once in my career to be, you know, to be a dominator in all the season. Well, congratulations on a great season so far, and in less than one hour, maybe you will be the world champion again. Yeah, hopefully. Thanks, Thank Stefan. And so down to the start line, the news is good about Yogi Carlson. He is injured, had a bad fall, nothing is broken. He will not race, but he will live to ride another day. So, good news for Yogi. The rest of them are all down there. Can Stefan Everts make it four world championships all together? This is the race for him. If he's in the first eight, he is the new world championship. Right now, Frederick Bolle on the Kawasaki goes to the front. He goes out into the lead, round 13 in Poland. Well, at the end of lap number one, the Futs has gone to the front. Frederick Bolli has gone to second. Stefan Evers has gone to third. And he'll be more than relaxed just to sit there very, very quietly and watch the race unfold. Yves de Maria, who was so strong in Indonesia, in Indonesia two weeks ago, he has got the Sebastian Tortelli machine again. Tortelli, I'm sure, will be out for the rest of the season. Back injury taking a long, long time to heal, and wisely so. His championship points have gone. So Frederick Bolli flying the flag for Kawasaki today. Stefan Everts knows that a top eight finish will make him the world champion for the fourth time, and that's a great, great achievement. Even more so because so many people had so much to say about the 97 Honda. Stefan Everts from day one said it's good enough for me and it's good enough to give Honda a world title. He's stuck by that, 10 out of 10 for that. He has been very, very strong all the way through the year. We saw him with some very, very dominant rides all over Europe. He was in spectacular form at Fox Hills. And here in Poland today, he knows what he's got to do. A top eight is good enough. That's what it's all about for him and his team. The Honda people, Colin Dugmore there on the Seerholz Honda, still wrapping up the points weekend after weekend. 28 years of age, doesn't deter Colin Dugmore from riding with the best in the world. So round 13 in Poland, this is the first heat of the day. Well, Marnie Befoot's having a look at that, holding his arm. That's the arm that he injured early on in the season. That wrist seems to have taken a lot of abuse. Stefan Everts, the Hooters going. He knows that he's almost done enough, but it's never over until the fat lady sings even more so in motocross. He certainly doesn't need to tangle with Frederick Bolle. His Honda people will know he doesn't need a tangle. He takes the win, goes ahead of Polly. Everts is the new world champion. He knows it. Well, a wonderful job of work from his team. They've worked very, very hard. Another world title to Stefan Everts and to Honda. How does it feel? Ah, oh, great. I'm so tired, you know, I, I wanted to win this moto, I, I felt I could do it and I just gave everything the last three laps. Why the win was so important to you? Because I have the number one and I want to prove it one more time. Incredible race, congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. And so, another world championship to Stefan Everts, some more champagne, but a job of work to do for Honda. Back to the gate, now he can rock and roll, he can just relax. And I'm sure we'll see a Stefan Everts that's just had so much success over the years. He can go out and have some fun now. Moni Befoots goes to the front. He's de Maria's out there. Paul Cooper is back and running again. Nice to see him. He's had some ridiculous injuries during the season. His shoulder took a long, long time to heal. And the SoCal Kawasaki rider back again in Poland to get some riding in before the Supercross series starts. And I'm sure he'll want to get a good result. So to the front goes Marni Befoots. He knows that the year is over for all of them. Stefan Everts is the new world champion. That's the man. What a wonderful picture of him. He really has done an amazing job for the HRC Honda factory. He's been a wonderful ambassador. He's never said a wrong word about the machine. And at the end of the day, he said he'd give them a world title. And that's exactly what he's done. You can't get better than that. 
That's what sponsorship is all about. He's never, ever bad-mouthed the machine. Never said a wrong word. He's always said, the bike can win it, I can win it. And he's shown us today, here in round 13 in Poland, he is the world champion yet again. Well done to Stefan, his team, and of course to all the Honda people that have worked so hard to support him. Second heat of the day for Poland, and Stefan Evert showing why he is the new world champion. He must be very, very relaxed. A familiar sight, Monik Befoot still pedaling away as hard as he can. And certainly for next year, there's going to be an awesome combination if they have Sebastian Tortelli and Yves de Maria, both Kawasaki mounted. There are rumors already that Frederick Bolle will join up with Stefan Everts at HRC Honda, but that's all speculation. This is a silly time of the season. We don't know who will go there. We don't know whether Talon Volan will come back again, but that's a victory for de Maria and he's had a couple now on the new Kawasaki and a second to Stefan Everts, but he's the world champion and that's much more important than a race win. So to the penultimate round in Switzerland. Look at the magnificent countryside in almost into the autumn. And down to the line they go yet again. Stefan Everts, the new world champion. Yves de Maria, the new challenger. And looking very, very impressive. Out of the gate they sweep slightly left and then they go around to the right. These are the ski slopes of Switzerland during the winter months. But right now, it's round 14 of the 250 motocross Grand Prix season. One round remains, and the war goes on. The man from Tennessee, Mike Brown. I want to get my name in lights. I'd like to be up there with Stefan Everts. But this is the man that has really impressed. Yves de Maria, the Frenchman. He's taken over the Oxbow Kawasaki ride of Sebastian Tortelli, whilst Tortelli is injured and they will team up for next year. And De Maria has done an outstanding job of work. I've seen him, I think, with four checkered flags out of six or seven heats that he's ridden the bikes. So that's an amazing start for De Maria. But Stefan Evans, yet again, is the new world champion, but still banking the points. With the cowbells in the distance, race number two starts. Mike Brown on the inside sweeps to the left. Will they all go through? There's a pile of bikes gone down. I think De Maria has certainly been caught up in that. That doesn't look good. There's no sign of De Maria. There we can see the Oxbow shirt. De Maria went down in the first corner. That doesn't look good at all. Mike Brown, the Tennessee rider. Go to town, Mike Brown. Tennessee rider has gone to the front. Frederick Bolly would appear to have gone to second. Marnie Befoot through into third. Then they're cheering already for the new world champion yet again. Fourth time, Stefan. Oh, Stefan Everts, the new world champion. Howard didn't even lose a position, just picks the bike up almost like a slow mo retake. Just do that again and I won't drop it, he says. And with, and with that, Pit Byra says, even when Stefan drops it, we can't pass him. So Stefan Everts in incredible form, riding like the true world champion that he is. Mani Befoot chasing away. Another race win to Stefan Everts. And hopefully Yves de Maria is okay. So we pack our bags for the last time in 1997 and head off for the last 250 GP of the year in Gaeldorf in Germany. Almost a carnival-like atmosphere. Stefan Everts is the new world champion. Everybody's here to party and celebrate. 
in preparation for the motocross designation in two weeks time and a wonderful turnout stefan everts is the king yet again brand new pair of oakley's yves de maria unconscious from two weeks ago in switzerland but he's here at Gaeldorf to fly the flag for Kawasaki and Oxbow. An immaculate circuit. Who's it going to be? The Kawasaki's have just got quicker and quicker. Look at the preparation of the circuit. It has been manicured. This is the German circuit at its best. Stefan Everts is in front. Mike Brown goes to second. Pit Byra on the Palmer Honda goes to third. The Futs is in there. Where is my man in green? Where's Mark Eastwood? Where's Frederick Bolle? Look at this incredible circuit. The youngsters around the world, when they see a circuit like this and they're in youth motocross, this is what you can aspire to. Circuits of this caliber certainly bring out the best riders in the world. And here today at the final 250 GP for 1997, we have a new world champion. We have Talon Voland, who started the year with a couple of accidents putting on a great display of racing and I'm sure he'll be back for 1998. Mike Brown, who in the preliminaries at Beaucaire proved to be a very, very strong rider indeed. One rider retires, Frederick Bolle is in there, but he's not up with the front runners. Frederick Bolle with a problem. Where is Yves de Maria, who got injured in Switzerland a fortnight ago when he was looking so incredibly good on the new Oxbow Kawasaki that he'll ride for 19. 98. Talon Voland having a great, great time, but that's the man they've come to see. Four times world champion riding out of Belgium here today at Gaeldorf. Look at this incredible crowd in Germany. From here they'll move on with Stefan Everts leading the Belgium motocross designations team in two weeks time to take on the best of the USA and in fact the best of the world. But right now he's got it so together He's got Pit Byra behind him, Mike Brown behind him, Talon Voland, who's had a pretty good year saved for a couple of crazy accidents. One where he went down the hill and had a big, big accident. That put him out for two GPs. And at this level of racing, you cannot afford to go out for two GPs. Tortelli was a sensation at the beginning of the year. He has had a problem. And in, uh, he missed Venezuela, he had an accident and missed Venezuela and the following GP. So we'll see him again in 1998. But at the moment, the German crowd have all come to see two people. One is Stefan Everts, and of course the other is Pit Byra. They tour around the whole of Europe from motocross to supercross, cheering on Pit Byra, and he really is a very colorful and a very, very popular rider indeed. But Stefan Everts, it's all over for the year. He's just been Mr. Consistency. He's done a great, great job for the Honda factory and for all his sponsors, in fact, for his tire sponsors and everybody else that put their money on that man for the fourth time. He's delivered the goods yet again. And I'm sure he's already thinking about 1998 and who will be riding as his partner on the second Honda. It's talk that it might well be Frederick Bolle, but that is speculation. And after the motocross designations, that will be announced as to who is riding for which team. A lot of the American riders changing teams as well. But out of Europe, it will be very, very interesting to see who goes Kawasaki, who goes Honda, who goes Yamaha, and who goes Suzuki. Number seven, you can see the German flags every time he comes around on this incredibly well-prepared. Look at that. Very, very nice to see at Fox Hills we saw all the Union Jacks, but today plenty of German flags. Stefan Everts has done enough. Listen to the horns. They certainly do salute him. They acknowledge that he's the best that there is. Stefan Everts takes the win. Pit Byra takes second. And the ever-popular Talon Voland, the American, takes third. Well, the last race for 1997, they come to the line at Gaeldorf in Germany. This is the last race of the year, the last race of the day. Stefan Everts is the new 97 world champion. And why? Because he is the best there is. He went across to Anadilla recently and ran with the best of the Americans, with Jeff Emig 
and McGrath and Albertine. He ran with them to prove that he can run with the best in the world and he is the world champion. Pit Byra, well, what a fitting end this would be to the 1997 season at Gaeldorf in Germany. The crowd on their feet. Pit Byra got out the gate first. This is all about adrenaline pumping stuff and motivation. Stefan Evers wants to come in. The Germans and the Hooters will go. They have chainsaw motors at Bercy so that they can make more noise. But right now, they don't need any noise. Pit Byra's got it under control. He's just got to keep Stefan Everts behind him. And maybe, maybe Stefan Everts will say, this is your home GP. I know exactly what it's like to win in front of your home crowd. I'm the new world champion. I'm a big enough man to let you take the final race of the year in front of your home crowd. But maybe not. Stefan Everts knows he's got a job of work to do for Honda. And he's not paid to come second to anybody. And right now, the crowd love it. But what we know and you don't know is that Stefan Everts is going for an all-time record of the most number of wins in a GP season. That's why he wants to go to the front. There is no Mr. Nice Guy. Not at all. Pit Byra is, have to, gonna ride, is gonna have to ride his socks off to keep ahead of Everts. He Everts wants the record. He wants to go into the record books ahead of his father, ahead of anybody that he is the all-time best. So he needs the win as much as he needs the GP title and the world title. So that changes the complexity. Stefan Evers wants to go through Pit Byra in front of his hometown. Evers, if you want it, you're going to have to ride every inch of the circuit for it. Look how dry and hard the circuit is. Pit Byra closes the door into the inside. Jockey Carlson behind all this. He can't even see what is going on. These are riders all the way around the circuit. There's Frederick Bolly. Where are the race leaders? Where is our cameraman? We need to know what is happening with Stefan Everts and the German legend, Pit Byra. There he is. Look at the two of them side by side. Pit Byra is on an absolute charge. But Stefan Everts wants to get past him. Number eight, Werner de Witt wants to get up with him as well. Jockey Carlson, he's had, he's had a good year. He's just had a couple of falls of the dice in the wrong direction, but he'll be back to race another day. So will Marnik Befutz. Then it's Frederick Bolle. But what is happening up front with Pit Byra and Stefan Everts? Can Everts get to the front? Marnik Befutz still through. Alan Boland, he's battling now with Frederick Bolle. Where is our race leader? The fans will be cheering on Pit Byra, and they know that the clock is running. Has he got enough time? And can he keep the hard charging Stefan Everts behind him? That's what they all want to know. There they go. They're still here together. Pit Byra, the German, again, Stefan Everts, the new Belgium and world champion. Everts wants this win so badly. He told everybody before the race, this is the real record that he wants. He needs this for the record book. He wants it badly. He's not doing this to help Pit Byra. Pit Byra wants it badly, but Stefan Everts, I think, is going to find his way through. He is the quickest. Stefan Everts has gone to the front. Yes, he has. Everts goes to the front. Pit Byra goes to second. Stefan Everts is going after a world record. What a shame that Pit Byra can't win in front of his home crowd. But it's not over yet. But Everett seldom makes a mistake. Yoki Carlson moving through nicely as well. The number one plate, the new world champion, Stefan Everts. He now goes ahead, clearly ahead, but the crowd is still egging on Pit Byra. It's not over yet for Pit Byra. He's not given up. Neither has Marnik Befutz. Neither has Yoki Carlson on the RWJ. Silkeline Honda, number eight. Werner de Witt goes inside, but Yoki Carlson will come back from that. He's got the drive out the corner, no problems there. Whoa! <laughs> Talon Voland, a silly mistake. Too much power. Talon Voland throws it away. Frederick Bolle goes through, moves up another point as well. But where's Pit Byra? We can hear the hooters all the way around the circuit. The Germans are shouting and screaming. The hats come off. Pit Byra has gone back to the front. Stefan Everts has thrown it away. Can you believe it? 
Stefan, he must be as mad as a hornet. Stefan ever threw it away, but Byra went through to the front in front of the crowd. What a popular win. The final race of 1997 in front of his home crown. Pitbira takes the win ahead of the new world champion. Look at that. Palmo Honda. What a race. And so the sun sets on another fantastic year of 250 GP motocross. Stefan Everts is the new world champion. Pitbira finishes on an all-time high. Yves de Maria looks incredibly promising for 1998. We've had a lot of fun putting all this together around Europe and around the world. We from Motivision look forward to being with you again in 1998.